super icy this morning. Lots of people stuck off on the side of the road. She was actually going that direction when she started out. <laughs> The goal of this weekend, guys, is different than kind of the stuff we've done before. In, in past adventures, we've gone out and I told you to ditch your packs and that kind of stuff and you have to live with what's in your pockets. And that's not what this is about at all. You can be as comfortable or as uncomfortable as you want. I, that's going to be on you to make the decision. What I have done is compiled kind of a list of activities, if you will. Um, skills, challenges, tasks, whatever it is, and you are willing if you are willing and you are interested in taking on as many of those as you want, you go for it. So for example, I'm just going to throw a couple out there. One, make a friction fire. If you've never done that before, okay, and then I suggest that you do something like that. If you've never made a friction fire before or you've never been successful at it, there are individuals here that have and can teach you the ways. Does that make sense? Um, if you've never built a natural shelter with your two hands using no tools and slept in it overnight in a wintertime situation, I challenge you to do that, okay? I want you to put your, your pride, your egos aside and be willing to admit that there's stuff that you don't know, there's stuff that you're not good at, me included. I suck at uh, navigation, for example, and I'm gonna see if you can teach me some stuff because that seems to be your thing. Um, I'm not very good at it. I mean, I can kind of read a compass and I kind of know a little bit about it and I can sort of not get lost, but I'm not very highly skilled at it and I would not be um, comfortable teaching somebody else that skill, if that makes sense, yeah? So this weekend is about that, okay? You can use all the gear that you brought and be cozy in your little sleeping bag and watch the birds fly by all weekend long if you want, or you can take it upon yourself to learn and do as much as possible that we can fit into three days. I do want to say a quick prayer because I think that it's that it's important that we start the weekend out right. Um, and regardless of if you're a Christian or a believer or not, I don't care because I'm going to do it anyway. All right. Um, so real quick, guys. Jesus, thank you so much for having these friends here. I am so tremendously grateful to have awesome men in my life that I can learn from, that I can teach things and just share time with. And I just pray that you keep us safe. Help us to stay humble, keep our egos small, and are willing to learn big. Amen. Amen. So, with that said, first task is, let's imagine this is a real life situation. And we've got a group of guys here that have kind of been set out on the land because the zombies have taken over the town. Um, I'm not going to tell you where to camp. I'm going to give you some guidelines of where to camp because I know where the property lines and stuff are, obviously. But for the most part, I want you guys to make that decision as a group. And that's easier said than done because everybody's going to have their opinions on what works and what doesn't work. I, my good friend Jason was telling me that a white pine, not only can you count the inside rings if you cut it in half, but you can count the whorls. So let's see if we can get a good example. So like on this tree in front of me here, there's a section with no branches and then there's a whorl going in a circle of branches. And then there's a section with no branches and then there's another whorl. No branches, whorl, and you can count those, and there's one for each year of that tree's life, which is kind of cool. Wind, <laughs> wood, water, and... Waste. No. <laughs> wampus cats. Wampus cats. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch out for them wampus, wampus cats. cats. Those are the worst. <laughs> yeah. Wind, water, wood... Women. Women. <laughs> No. Yeah. Widow makers. Widow makers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the fourth one. Wid and, wid widow makers. And that's the problem with this area. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, but, if you look right past there, that one tree that's literally stuck in the ground, those branches are opposite of all the rest of them. <laughs> that it did not grow that way. That tree, there's a tree top that literally stuck in the ground. I'd say that's probably accurate. When I'm at camps, I, I look for the three bees beavers, bushes, and Briars? <laughs> Bobcats. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have spent many a night under homemade debris shelters and they're very labor intensive, but they do work. 
And if you've never done it, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, <laughs> but you have done it. But I have done it plenty <laughs> of times. So I now pack one of these not new lightweight fancy tarps, and uh, I'm going to put that up and put my little ranger roll up underneath it. So, and uh, we'll be nice and toasty. Tell me about your coonskin hat here, big guy. What do we got going on? So, uh, growing up, um, I had a real coonskin cap, and I literally wore it to nothing. Like, <laughs> and so, I've always liked them. Um, and the one thing that I have found out about coonskin caps or natural fur caps in general is when you move through brush, it actually glides through. It doesn't grab your hat and pull your hat off. Um, and I've noticed with, I have a wool watch cap or wool cap and the, I, ca I caught myself getting too hot, taking it off, too cold, putting it on, too hot, taking it off and you're sweating, you know, but with the natural le leather and fur, it breathes so much easier and I never have to take my hat off and it keeps me warm, but yet I don't get too hot. And um, plus it's just cool. Plus it's friggin' awesome. <laughs> it's, it's awesome, so. <laughs> Temperatures are going to be really low tonight. We'll probably be in the teens. Most likely we're at about, uh, what is the elevation here? Jason, do you remember what the elevation is here? 2,500? Yeah, 2,500, 3,000 feet, something like that. Can I, can I give you some advice on this real oh, quick? please, yeah. I've done this a lot. Okay. Um, and I've had some that fail miserably and yeah, some yeah. that go really well. Um, and here's what's going to happen if it rains. It's not going to rain. I don't think it's in the forecast at all, but yeah. if it rains and you were to sleep under this, here's what would happen. Yeah. Rain would hit this trunk. Yeah. And it runs down the hill. Yeah. And it runs down the hill, and it will drip right here where you're laying. Okay. Right on top right of it. Right on top. Yeah, so that's just in my experience. Yeah. So what I would suggest is yeah. that you shift everything yeah. to one side. Okay. Like the side of your bed yeah, yeah. is under this. Yeah. And everything moves that direction, yeah. and then your roof goes that way okay. to shed yeah. the water off. Yeah. It's not bad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just some... Yeah, yeah. It's not going to rain, so it's not going to matter tonight. Yep. And you can just pile a bunch of crap on here and stay warmer, maybe. But So when it drips, then it would drip down at the yeah. edge of my shelter, potentially, instead of right in the middle. All right, so I might still get wet. But not as wet. But not as wet. Yeah. You're going to get yeah. wet. Any, any shelter like this, you're going to get wet. You're going to get wet. Yeah, I wouldn't Guaranteed. do this if it was going to rain tonight. Yeah, it would like suck. What, what you, yeah, it would yeah. suck. It would suck. It is pretty miserable, but um, it keeps, it, it's still, building a natural shell like this is not waterproof mm -hmm. ever. Ever, yeah. But it's warmer and drier than just staying out, laying out in the yeah. open. You know what I mean? And if you can do what I'm doing and also keep a piece of plastic in your pocket. Yep. And cover, then Mylar blanket, yeah. trash bag, yeah. anything like that is just yeah. labor saver right yeah. there. So Daniel's got a pretty good setup going on here and his pack only weighed about 25 pounds walking in here because he had no idea what to expect which is smart. <laughs> so so he's got a very good setup here, nice and clean and simple. And I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit about how he's gonna sleep tonight. So what we got right here is trash bags, 55 gallon drum liner. I always carry about three or four of these things. You can cut them lengthwise. They're worth their weight in gold. Um, and then I got a military uh, double-sided emergency blanket that once again, doesn't weigh anything. Put that down. I got a uh, climate uh, static V. Really, really lightweight, really small, packs down to nothing, uh, keeps you up off the ground. And then this is the tried and true old taco ranger roll, however you want to call it. Uh, and what it is, is it's a military poncho. You lay that down, then you put a military emergency blanket, you lay that on top of it, then you put a whoopee, because if you don't have it, your butt will be cold. Um, you put that down on top, and the whoopee has uh tie out so you run it through all the grommets on the poncho and then that makes taco and then you throw a military wool blanket in it and you essentially have wool wooby reflective emergency blanket and then a wa wa waterproof co coating and it really rolls up to just a little bit bigger than your best on the market sleeping bag i mean it's really not that big when you roll it up it does weigh a little bit more there, there the are wool blanket adds yeah that weight. wool blanket really adds the weight but <laughs> it sure is really, nice it, it really is nice on cold nights yeah. it's supposed to get down to the low 20s so i'll be sleeping comfy yeah that's how daniel moon would do it that's right <laughs> and we're gonna get a little fire going because it's pretty cold it's i think it's still in the 20s what was it 27 when we got here i think that's what it was 27 degrees or so when we got here so the roads were icy. The roads were very, very icy, obviously. 
Um, but we're gonna get a little fire going and just keep it keep it going so we can warm our hands by it from time to time. I have sensitive, tender, delicate paws and I need to warm them from time to time. So get more firewood. Okay, no. we'll get some more. We're now, doing it, boss. Now! <laughs> He actually did. He, he wasn't able to. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh -huh. Yo, yo. Ooh. So this is really hard pine sap that's come out of this tree that just recently fell. Um, it's pretty much like in a rock form right now. But if you apply a little open flame to that, that will burn. This piece right here will burn for a long time. I would say this would probably burn for five minutes. This small chunk right here, and we've got loads of oh, yeah. Yeah. heat moves through conduction, that, convection, yeah. radiation. So this like this, this will keep me from touching the ground and heat conducting into me, but it won't. Uh, uh, but I also don't want to crush the air pockets, which is going to slow down convection of, of air of, uh, of of cold air moving and that's moving into my body. Big, that's why I'm putting the big sticks here. So that's going to keep me from crushing my my air pockets, and then I'm gonna. But uh, but I don't want to lay on that. It's too bumpy. So after i get done with this laying this out platform for me to lay on um i'm gonna put i'm gonna put another layer of of pine needles and things like that on top just to cushion and i'm gonna go through and kind of look at the, each log and make and see if there's a less pointy side that i can put up but um uh but house building shelter building conduction convection and radiation you'll have to deal with that in, in, in one way or the other and that's um uh, that's what we're doing here i like it there's a thousand there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, like I always say, but as long as you're barbecue and frisky at the end of the day, everything is fine. Um, I would do this in a very, very similar fashion, but not exactly the same way. I would normally put those bigger branches on the bottom and then the pine boughs on top. Not wrong, not right. It's just a different way to do it. And I like his style here. I like how you put these big logs on the on the sides yeah and then stack those across it's perfect and filled it yeah. all with pine needles I think so i'm kind of doing overkill because it's very very cold it's gonna be very cold tonight so yeah. so i'm actually doing both I'm, I'm stuffing it underneath and then and then i'm stuffing it on top uh we are going to be trying out the nano spark from from exotac and keep the profanity down <laughs> yeah hooligans um chris has never used it before um, nor have I. I've never used the Nano Spark before, but the beauty of something like this is that you don't have to be experienced. You don't have to have all the bushcrafty skills, the woodsman skills, to be able to make fire happen if you have something like this. Yeah. You again? Perfect. All right, and then show us what's inside. Inside of the Nano Spark is a small little tinder tab. These things are fantastic, they're fairly waterproof. They're easy to ignite and they burn for a long time. So if you have kindling that's a little bit wet, tinder that's not ideal, this will help you get your fire going. And for an emergency situation, I think it's um, it's just a no-brainer to carry something small and light like that. You wouldn't even notice it in your pocket. Yep, and keep that in one big pile. And that's what you'll put on top of it after you get it lit up. It's got an arrow on it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> So would the Nano Spark here be something that would replace the Bic lighter in my pocket? Probably not, um, because I think it's, you know, I use a lighter kind of on a daily basis. I, I burn garbage. If you live in a rural area, sometimes you got to burn paper and stuff like that. It's just the way you, you do life. Um, I'm starting fires on the regular, and a lighter is just the most convenient, easy way to do it. However, something like this, it's really reliable, waterproof. You could stick in your pack in your survival kit, keep in your pocket when you're out rambling the woods. And if you needed a fire, this would easily make it happen no matter what the conditions were. Usually as a general rule, once the flames kind of get above the kindling that you put on there and you know your wood's burning good, you can put more stuff on top. We're not savages. Nah. <laughs> 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 Only when we need to be. <laughs> <laughs> I found my camping spot for the night. This is a flat spot. Looks like where 
a long time ago, a tree had toppled over, lifted up the earth a little bit and made this flat spot. And it is up above where the rest of the boys are camping. Cause I think it's gonna be significantly colder down there where they are, but that's on them. They're big boys. They won't die, I don't think. I always keep an extra pair of um, clothes. This is just basically long johns, tops, bottoms, socks, and a wool hat. So even if I was to get soaking, soaking wet, I'd have a layer of dry clothes to put on no matter what. And I just keep it in a very expensive dry bag right there. And then inside of my pack is my bivy bag. And inside of my bivy bag, so it stays dry if it was to rain, um, in this situation, it'd be snow, but anyway, inside of my baby bag is my sleeping bag. And this is crucial to a good night's sleep. Um, I mean, it's not absolutely necessary, but man, it is sure is nice and convenient. This is a, a big Agnes Q Core sleep pad, inflatable sleep pad, and it, it is the best. I look, really look forward to laying down on this every night. About investing in one of those inflatable pillows but I'm getting soft but not that soft yet and that my friends is camp <laughs> set up I might string my poncho up over it it's just an added layer of shelter um, added layer of insulation just in case we get any precipitation that sort of thing, but for now, I think that's probably gonna be fine. This is starting yeah. to look like something, Nate. Yeah. At first, you know, I thought this guy's this guy's hopeless, you know, but now <laughs> I feel like you might be on to something. Yeah, could be. It looks could great. Be. Looks great. This is a silky big boy, and it is my preferred method of gathering firewood, shelter construction. Anything that needs to cut wood crossways, this is this is it. It's safer and more efficient than an axe, in my opinion. Um, not as versatile, obviously, as an axe, but it's um, if your only job, your only goal is to cut some wood in two, this thing will do it. And it's a really good size. It's it's a little bit big and bulky to carry around in a pack, but it um it really gets the job done. Kind of tight in your yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> thanks thanks for wearing those jeans chris that was really good all right We got some uh, protruding ice crystals happening since we've arrived. Yeah, cache <laughs> cap. There get ready to go. Hey, Dustin, <laughs> what's your deal, bro? Make me a coonskin cap with cache in it. <laughs> Did it sound like this? And he made the sound, and I'm like, yeah, it sounded just. Uh, and then it hit me because he had this big grin on his face. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> it's like, it's like, I burned a perfectly good pair of socks because of you. <laughs>